right, good morning from sunny Southern California. It's a really nice day outside, so I thought I'd demonstrate um, an apparatus that I've been working on for, what, nearly a year now? So the idea is, um, in the desert, I'd love to go out and try prospecting some of the dry washes in the summer. And there's no water around, so um, I want a little... Uh, automatic panning machine is what I started out thinking and um, that panning machine uh, would, would have its own little water recirculating water supply and so forth. I've done many many modifications to this machine and I've cut lots of mats of different materials and I've got a I've got a machine that I like very much right now so I thought I'd demonstrate it to you this morning outside in this beautiful sunshine. It's a really nice day. This is a uh, neoprene, and I've cut grooves, which I call chevrons, in the neoprene. They're about two millimeters deep, five millimeters wide. I've also tried polycarbonate. Um, this worked great, but I, it has one problem, and that is, um, maybe it's obvious from the camera, that it, it bows a little bit because I cut the grooves too deep relative to the thickness. So I need a thicker piece of polycarbonate. Um, Nonetheless, it works equally as well as this does, and the grooves are much easier to cut. So I've got the machine set up. It sets up in a matter of um, minutes or less. I've got it leveled this way, and I've got a slope here of um, a quarter of an inch per foot. So what's that? One part in 50, roughly. And I'll show you the machine, and I'll show you the operation of the machine, and we'll actually run some gold through it. So let's take a look at the machine itself. There's a 35-watt motor. This is an eccentric uh, coupler between the motor and this uh, drive mechanism, which is connected to the top of the table. These flexures are springs and they just support the table. This table only moves back and forth this way, so there's nothing fancy at all about the motion. And that's the whole thing underneath. There's a base. The uh, water comes out here. It runs down the table proper. Of course, there's a mat on top of this, and it goes out the exit port here. Um, I'm gonna clean this out really well so that there's no residual because I want to do a very careful test to see how much I lose through the table itself. And finally, this is how the water works. Um, the output from here, this is the tailings water into a tub. I can catch the tailings in here. There's a little um, aquarium pump down here. Everything runs off at of 12 volts or thereabouts, and it pumps it back up into there. So I want to keep the tailing bucket absolutely clean for this experiment, and uh, we'll move on from there. So there it is in operation. Pretty simple and very portable. So here I have about 4 milligrams in total of uh, very fine gold. The particle size ranges from... Oh, 50 microns on up to 250 microns. So most of it is 200 mesh and finer. I'm going to add that to the beach sand that's in the beaker, and we'll use that to test the system.
Here I'm using a snuffer bottle to snuffer up the material in each groove individually. I'm starting here with the first groove and I'll analyze that before I move on to the next groove. It's really quite simple and this process could be continuous. All right, the analysis goes like this. I just take the contents of the snuffer bottle, put it onto one of these uh, watch glass beaker refluxing dishes. I get some more water to thoroughly clean out the snuffer. And like a batea pan, just spin it, let it settle for a sec, pipe that out the residual water, folded paper towel, dry it, to that level of dryness and flip it over and um, I can easily see all the gold in there. So I'm going to leave that to the side here and we'll look at it under the microscope in a minute but I'm going to do the next groove. So we'll do groove number two now. Make sure it's thoroughly cleaned out. I could pan this down a bit more, but it's completely unnecessary. I just want to get the gold to settle to the bottom of the dish. Remove the water and be able to flip it over without losing it. Get out. Paper towel. Dry it a bit so there's no standing water. Then the surface tension of the water just holds it. And I turn it over. And I see maybe one piece of gold, and that's from the second groove, the second chevron. So here's grooves uh, three, four, and five taken together. Dry it a little bit and flip it. Right, finally, here's uh, six and seven, the last two grooves. And uh, nothing by eye either. Okay, now here's the bucket of tailings. I'm going to clean the machine thoroughly. Um, but here's the bucket of tailings. I'm going to remove the bucket of tailings. And I'm going to run this through the machine again. And here's the material from all of the grooves uh, of the tailings of the first run. And I don't see a single speck of gold in there, but 
<clears throat> we'll take a closer look. All right, here's the results of the experiment. This contains the material from the first groove, from the second groove, grooves three, four, and five, grooves six and seven, and here's all the tailings run back through the machine again. So let's take a look. To analyze what we've got, I'm gonna use my little magnifier. This clips onto the, my cell phone case. All right, now, this is the first groove. It's where all the material, we'd like all the material to end up in here. Remember, we only started with four milligrams. And it's just a relative check. We wanna see what percentage is caught in each groove and then in the tailings. And we're gonna have to just estimate it by eye. So there's the gold from the first groove. Let me magnify this up a little bit because it's really quite beautiful. Huh? All right, so let's go to the second groove. So here's everything that came out of the second groove. There's one fairly big piece there. A couple more pieces down there. But I'd say that it's less than 10% of the first groove. Groove three, four, and five. So this is collectively the third, fourth, and fifth grooves. There's a piece of gold. Maybe that's one there, there's some small bits in there. So a few pieces of small stuff. This is groove six and seven. That's not gold, that's a yellow mineral of some kind. I don't, I haven't seen anything so far. Maybe that's a piece, not totally sure. There's a lot of yellow mineral, so you gotta be careful. Like that thing there is just a yellow stone. And you've got orange stones. They're really beautiful, I don't know what they are. So here's all of the grooves of the tailings run through. There's a piece of gold. Yep, one piece of gold. see a whole lot else. So my conclusion is is that the table does a really good job at this really fine gold. So let's talk about what the size of the gold is. So I'm back on the first groove. Take a look at the size of the uh, gold there. And now I'm going to the scale. and then back to the gold. I don't have a uh, way of doing this all at the same time. I'll have to work on that. But for sure, most of this stuff is down in the 100 micron range. So the particles in this photograph are would all fit through probably 150 mesh. So here I've drawn a graph of the Number of gold particles I found that were roughly greater than 50 microns. It's approximate. You can see in the first groove, I found, uh, I counted 53 particles, second groove 11, and so forth. 
it's obvious from the graph the machine is doing quite a good job at fine gold recovery. 